I can get into like how combat works, but how the actual numbers work. Like what armor does, what fucking stats do. Like when you see, you know, like a, like a ring and say your ring is plus 21 because it's the Asylum Surgeon's ring. Like I can tell you how much that 21 strength ranged and magic bonus will add to your deep damage. If you're ever curious how the combat works and the strength bonus, mage bonus, and range bonus work, it's literally 1.25 per individual stat. Let's put it into perspective of Bando's chest plate versus malevolent chest plate. So, if you have a Bando's chest plate, you will know that if I'm not mistaken, Armadale chest plate, Bando's chest plate, and Subjugation chest should all be plus 26 to their respective style of combat. So, if we whip out the handy dandy calculator and we do 26 multiplied by 1.25 remember every point is 1.25 that is a whopping total of 32.5 now let's put this into perspective let's say you're you have no gear on you're completely naked and you're fighting a monster and you hit a 1000 then let's say you equip the bando's chest plate or the armadale chest plate or the subjugation garb and you hit that same what would have been 1000 damage it will now be a 1,032.5. I don't know if it rounds down or up, but it will be a 1,032 is what you will see damage-wise to the monster. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty of this bitch, right? So, the, the tier 70 chests are 26. Whereas the tier 90 chess pieces, the ones that degrade, the ones that cost these mainscapes actual money to pay for, they are at a 34. They are 34. So 26 versus 34. Let's do the difference. Whip out that calculator. Because we don't know maths for jack shit. We weren't born Korean, unfortunately, and blessed with a math attribute of plus five. Let's put this in. 34 times 1.25 equals... Whoa, I don't know where I did the math wrong, but it just said zero. 34 times 1.25 equals 42.5. So, the difference between a tier 70 is like eight damage. Eight fucking damage per piece. You know, you gotta ask yourself, is it worth it? You would have hit a 1032 with that Bando's chest plate. Instead, you're hitting a 1042. You're doing like 10 damage more. That is the difference between one single slot piece. And by the way, the chest is the best slot, so it's the biggest difference. 10 damage. So when people sit here, and fucking tell me that doing fucking bossing in Malevolent is a practically a requirement. I am looking at them like they are fucking retarded because they don't even comprehend the actual calculator behind the combat system. They don't. You know, I might not be the best individual PVM. I'm pretty borderline retarded when it comes to it. But... What I do comprehend is numbers, and I do comprehend math. I might need a calculator for said math, but I will be able to get behind it and get it. So, what we learned today is that tier 90 is actually trash fucking gear. In Wiki, there is calculators for this shit in what your damage difference will be when applying specific pieces of gear. And the fucking calculator is per each bonus in strength, ranged, or mage, you're looking at a 1.25 damage increase. Now that is per hit though. That is another thing we need to apply to this. So that extra 10 damage is applied per hit. And the way it works is it's per each hit. So when you put a dot on somebody, that's actually five hits. It hits five times. You know, your combust and your, your bleeds and shit like that. That's five hits. So if you have the difference between what are you meowing about? I know I'm getting over here and getting excited, but calm down, bro. So when you have, you know, the Bando's chest and someone else has a malevolent chest, if you combust, well, it won't be combust because it's a mage move, but regardless, if you combust what the Bando's chest piece would have done, 
you will do 50 damage more for one basic ability. Whereas your other basic abilities are going to be doing 10 damage, the ones that aren't dots. You're going to be doing 10 more damage. So if we're talking about, you know, a five minute fight, we might be talking about like 5,000 to 10,000 damage difference, which in the overall end scheme of things is decent. It's decent, but not required, nor anything that you will see drastic fucking changes. You might see a couple seconds in your timer record for the boss, but other than that, it is nothing to sit there and tell people that if they don't have that shit, um, that they're garbage and they won't be able to DPS. Because at the end of the day, if you also know anything about the combat system, is that there is only a very few ways to get accuracy. Accuracy is much more important than damage. The DPS gear does not constitute our accuracy. Number one, your weapon's accuracy, the tier of it, that is the most crucial, beneficial piece to your accuracy. The next best thing that will constitute your accuracy is your aura. Your aura. If you are using Maniacal Berserk and Reckless, those increase accuracy by 10%, if I'm not mistaken. Massive. Actual 10% chance, not 10% applicable to the base of it, it's 10% more. So if you're at 80% accuracy, you are now at 90% accuracy. It wouldn't be an extra 8% accuracy because it is based off the overall, not the base. Third way to come by accuracy is a necklace called Reaper Necklace. That is a three, that can go up to 3% extra accuracy. The fourth way is a Nihil. That is, if I, if I am not mistaken, a 4% increase to accuracy. And the final way is a scrimshaw, which is a 2 to 4% increased accuracy, depending on if you are using the superior or not, which we are, most all of us are Iron Men, so it would be the 4%. What have we learned today? DPS gear constitutes the damage. Other ways are how we constitute our accuracy. Now, for the remaining people who have stuck through this bitch with me this long and weathered out the storm and listened to my terrible fucking voice and terrible mannerisms, you are going to learn the part about defense. Defense is very interesting in how it works. Now, we get new gear, and that gear, it has armor. That armor does not decrease the damage that we have incoming. Let me repeat that, because some of you are like, no, it definitely does decrease the damage you take. Armor works very specifically. I don't know the exact calculations, but I'm on it, and I will figure it out. You have two types of armors. Well, three, technically, because they're hybrids. You have tank armors, and you have power armors. Power armor and tank armor, if they are on the same playing level field, they might have the same armor if you are looking, let's say, at... I think it's tier, if you look at a tier 90 chest plate for power armor, let's say a malevolent, and you look at an acto piece of armor, if I'm not mistaken, or not acto, sorry, a tetsu, tier 85 tank armor, they will have the exact same armor. Armor, it does not reduce incoming damage. What armor actually does is the higher armor that you have, it increases the possibility for you to take a zero damage. That is what armor does. Armor increases the chance for the monster to not hit you at all. It does not increase the actual damage reduction. So if you were to be hit for a 1000 and then you put some armor on, you would be hit for a 900 and something. Not how it works. That is how power armor works though. Tank armor works a little bit different, and it's very small in how it works different. Each slot of tank armor, no matter what level, let me make that clear, no matter what level, adds a 1.8 flat percent bonus to damage soaking. If something were to hit a, if this is only applicable to tank armor, by the way, if something were to hit a 1,000 on you, and then you put on, let's say, a chest piece of tank armor, such as Tetsu or Acto, and it hit another 1,000, 
that 1,000 would be reduced by 1.8% damage, which is equivalent to 18 damage. So that would be a 19, or sorry, a 982. So that is the difference. Armor, the actual armor is what gives you the opportunity to be hit for a zero. Tank armor is the only armor that soaks actual physical damage and reduces it by 1.8 per slot. So if you do the math on 1.8 times five, so you're wearing five pieces of tank armor, it would reduce by 9%. If you can get, you know, the Leviathan cape and the Leviathan ring and maybe some kind of necklace and a shield, you might be able to push up to like 13 or 14% reduction in soaking. Uh, but that is how armor works, boys. And that is why it is weird as fuck when I see, you know, mainscapes and they'll be wearing like, let's say, Pernix, uh, Pernix helm, Pernix chest and Pernix legs, but then their gloves are glaven boots and their gloves are, sorry, their boots are glaven boots and their gloves are tracking gloves, which are tier 85 tank. Those individuals do not understand the combat system and how it works. Sometimes you would probably see me doing racks with Acto boots, but that's only because the damage that I see that my subjugation boots can output, I don't think was equivalent compared to the armor and the soaking of 1.8% that my Acto boots would be able to give me tier 90 tank armor wise. So there are certain situations where you can mix, you know, tanking gear and um, DPS gear. And my personal preference that I will probably start running as soon as I have the opportunity is going to be hood, gloves, boots, all acto, and chest and legs are going to be the only damaging stuff. That mainscape player you mentioned was me. That mainscape player that you think was you was also me. Trust me. I didn't just one day wake up and know this information. It took, you know, a long time of conversing with people such as Alex, who actually put me on this game. Not the game itself, but this, I call game knowledge. But this knowledge and told me that, A, you shouldn't really worry about, it's a lot of people and it's 9% mainscapes. Mainscapes do not comprehend the actual, you know, formulas of this game and what make things work and stuff like that. And that's what being an Iron Man, in my opinion, is all about, is really getting into the nitty gritty and learning this information. Because this information is so fucking pertinent. It is so important. It's not even fucking funny. Like, it's just so, and it's amazing to understand the knowledge. Because when you get new pieces of gear, you can comprehend, wow, like I just bumped my DPS up by like 2%. Like, 2% is massive. That's another thing. And, and like, like for instance, my buddy ZMI, like when he does Abyssal Demons, which he has over 600,000 Abyssal Demon kills, he wears a very interesting setup on his mainscape. And people would fucking give him flack for it. He wears 3% Demon Hunter or Demon Slayer armor. Each one of those pieces adds 4% damage to demons. So that's like 12% damage. And then there's like another item that adds like a 5% somewhere. I forget where, but he ends up doing like fucking like 17% extra damage on demons. And people in the mainscape community, like in his clan, like are like, why are you doing that? Why aren't you wearing full leveling? Like this doesn't make sense. Like they don't come they don't comprehend how it works because if you know how it works you'll know that each one of these slots can only better your dps by like one point something percent so to wear full malevolent you're borderline fucking retarded compared to wearing demon slayer if you're fighting demons and the same is applicable to like the dragon slayer armor or whatever um and the same with the dragon slayer perk and the demon slayer perk and all those perks that do specific damage to that monster, like you're more like, like each piece is like very low percents in increment in, uh, in an incremental, you know, amount. So like once you start to comprehend this information, you can comprehend, you know, perfect layouts of gear and understand that this is where you need to be in order to be outputting the, you know, damage that you feel is sufficient for your grind. And you know, in a nutshell, that is Pluto's combat throne formula.